Um, I think we know there's some, some also some, um, some other companies that are um, helping to lead uh, change as well. I think uh, one of the things that we've observed and, and Ed Steedle, our next uh, um, speaker is going to, to speak to this. Um, Ed is uh, at Microsoft and uh, Microsoft is well positioned to, to help implement a lot of the changes that, that need to occur in a skills um, paradigm in communities. Ed, uh, you know, has, has led partnerships at, at Microsoft for several years and is very interested in this notion that uh, individuals can be upskilled to grow to their grow their creative muscle. Um, he is actually a STEM major uh, himself and uh, is really passionate about uh, STEM and STEM education and, and how individuals can participate in the STEM economy. Uh, I think you're going to be really impressed. Uh, the focus of, of Ed's presentation is or the, the, the purpose of including this is to provide a case study. So you just heard from different perspectives. Ed's going to share some um, how, how some of these very complex programs that Martin just alluded to are really, really uh, moving a lot of boulders um, all at the same time and um, just the right angle. Um, Ed can talk about how uh, he's helping to, to lead in some efforts like this, uh, particularly in Atlanta. So Ed, I'm going to turn it over to you. Great. Thank, thanks, Ted. Just a volume check. Can you hear me okay? Yes, you're great. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, well, thank you. Um, thanks, STEM Connector, for the opportunity today. Um, very excited to share what we're doing in Atlanta, as well as some of the other things that we're doing globally, because um, we are a global company, around skilling and upskilling, particularly in, in light of, of the environment and COVID in which we find ourselves today. So um, just a quick little blurb about myself. Um, I've been a... Um, as, as everybody was talking about upskilling and reskilling over the last couple of years, I looked at my tra career trajectory and it is by no means linear. And I think that would uh, uh, apply to a lot of people who are on the call today. Um, I, as Ted mentioned, I have an undergraduate degree. Um, I did an MBA. I um, did dabbled in commercial real estate. I've started companies. I've done a bunch of different things. And what I've realized is, as we've been talking, um, I have the benefit of like digesting a lot of what's been discussed today is I'm actually a, a, a byproduct of constant upskilling and reskilling. Um, I, I, I found myself in technology roles. I found myself out of technology roles and sales roles and then business program management and innovation and all kinds of different things. And, and so I am myself actually a, a product of that because um, I've, I've had to, as many people have had to reinvent reinvent myself and my career as my career um, trajectory has continued throughout my life. So again, uh, been at Microsoft for roughly 10 years, done some business development. I've been in finance. I've uh, ran an innovation, a set of innovation labs globally. This is, that's the picture from one of the labs that I managed in, uh, in Bangkok in Thailand. And then most recently, I've been, um, for the last two and a half years in worldwide learning, focused on this employability outcome. Like, what, what does that look like? And what I, what I often like to say, particularly in, um, because I'm in worldwide learning, is why are, why are people learning? And people are learning usually for one of two things. It's either to get a job or to get a better job. And I really like the, um, the on-ramp. So I think the on-ramp component from the research that was discussed today really talks about those people getting a job. And then the expressways are often, I, I kind of look at that as, as, you know, a career enhancement. So I wanted to also just ground everybody in Microsoft's mission. So at, at one point when Bill Gates was leading the company, it was to get a PC on everybody's desk. Well, I think we've pretty much accomplished that. And when uh, Satya Nadella, Nadella took over the company, he launched this new mission, which I, I personally love because it really allows us the ability to do a number of different things from a business perspective. And it's really about empowering every person on the, in the planet to achieve more. And that's really what this program Accelerate Atlanta is all about. Um, and it really brings together a, no, a myriad of other different programs that exist across the company. Um, I also wanted to highlight uh, something that we announced in June, um, which is what we call our Global Skills Initiative. The first phase of our global skills initiative is to help 25 million job seekers, people impacted by COVID all across the world to gain the skills that they need to be competitive in this new digital economy. This program brings together all of the different assets across the company, 
uh, Microsoft assets, Microsoft learning uh, programs, as well as LinkedIn learning, as well as um, programs that are ran through through GitHub. So still all under the Microsoft umbrella, uh, but all individually and bring a, set, a unique set of values to um, this sort of flow of, of learning. I also um, wanted to encourage people as I dig into the model, um, I think it's incredibly appropriate for this audience and based on the, the topic of the conversation today, I wanna to try to make this interactive. So um, Ted has agreed to moderate either the chat or if people raise their hands, uh, please feel free. Um, I, I hope that you can get a lot out of this and I think uh, making this a two-way conversation might be the best way to do that. So um, Accelerate Atlanta is really about um, the balancing of the balancing the playing field, making opportunities for jobs and technology read, more readily available to underserved communities. The Accelerate uh, umbrella or brand um, really has launched in earnest in Atlanta. Uh, we've actually recently launched a couple of weeks ago or announced that we're going to be moving this initiative to Houston. So for those of you maybe in the Houston market, there may be some opportunities for us to partner uh, to build out this model because it is by no means easy. Um, and there's a lot of different players in this, in this space. So again, Digital uh, Accelerate Atlanta is really focused on serving underserved communities and, and giving them a pathway into these, these career opportunities that they may or may not have felt like they've even had a chance to participate in. So really this map, what I wanted to get across in this slide uh, and, and in typical Microsoft fashion, these slides are all very dense. So I won't read everything on these slides, but I do wanna hone in on a couple of key key things. I, this is a, a true triple P or public private partnership. You have Microsoft kind of being the foundational, foundational um, partner in bringing all of these different players here together. Microsoft has made a, a financial contribution. We are bringing a number of different programs into the Accelerate Atlanta motion, which I like to think of as a, a really a go to market of all of our different skilling initiatives across the entire company. Um, we have a number of local initiatives that are, are specific to the Atlanta market that are going to all be falling underneath this umbrella. We also have LinkedIn initiatives that we're bringing to bringing to Atlanta with the free job postings for essential for essential businesses. But in order for this model to really be successful, Microsoft can't do this alone. And I've heard a number of people talk about, you know, you need to have employers, um, employers as the customer, if you will. And so we have corporate partners who are also a part of this ecosystem that we're building. We have Coca-Cola, Home Depot, and Accenture are all making financial contributions to be a part to really grow this community skilling effort from the ground up. We would not be able to do this without the support of local and regional government. Um, the mayor of Atlanta and the Chamber of Congress has been uh, specifically very engaged on this in this initiative. Because of, the, because of the wide ranging impact that we hope to have um, with our partners, which leads me to the fourth part of this um, model, which is our learning partners or uh, oftentimes workforce partners. <clears throat> we have um, a number of different partners that I've personally managed. Um, I managed uh, the, a book of business, a depth partnership motion for General Assembly, Springboard and Open Classrooms. Um, amongst a couple of others. And those, all of those organizations really focus on getting someone from zero to job. They leverage much of Microsoft technical content. What we've realized by setting up these partners, partnerships is that we know really, we know very well how to develop technical content specifically focused on Microsoft skills and Microsoft technology. What we also realize is there are other organizations that out there who are a lot better at getting someone employable. Because I would argue that, you know, we can get somebody ready for a certification, but a certification in something might enhance someone's ability for employability, but might not be able to help them get that job. And it's the partners like Springboard and General Assembly and Open Classrooms that bring all of that technical components together, as well as this, the more soft skills, if you will, or the capacity building that's necessary for someone to go from learning to actually getting a job. So when we went into the Atlanta market, um, we really did a lot of work on defining all of the different personas. Um, again, a very dense slide, but I, I would say one of the key takeaways from this is 
you can't be everything to everybody. And so if you can define what those roles or those people that you're trying to impact, that those are the ones that, that and you go deep with those. So we have a total of 11 personas, which sounds quite wide, but if you think about all of the different types of, of uh, programming that we have available, both self-paced, uh, instructor-led through some of our partners, as well as some of our hybrid modalities, which can combine uh, instructor-led with um, some self-paced learning. And we feel that we can serve a lot of different audiences across the entire Atlanta market. So again, we think, we think there are, um, you know, in Atlanta, we can, we can probably target over 4.4 4 million people with our various offerings across these different personas. So the work we've done in Atlanta, again, we, we've, we've defined who our personas are, and we wanted to make sure that we ground ourselves in these proficiencies, or these 10 foundational proficiencies. These things, uh, they, average, they work from the bottom up where we have fundamental understanding of productivity tools, um, you know, fundamental uh, understanding of what cloud, cloud-based computing is, to more intermediate type of programming around data analytics, and then to more advanced type of programming around things like software engineering, security, network connectivity, um, and data science. So again, I think one of the key takeaways from this is make sure that you understand, again, what your customers are looking for, going back to that comment where the employer as, as the customer and understanding that anything that any of the folks that you're going to touch in a model like this are gonna have, um, that are gonna be readily accepted or employed by um, these, these uh, employers who are part of this partnership model. So we, as mentioned, we have a number of different personas and this is trying to categorize these people into you know, the essential foundational job ready and then expert. We're not gonna to spend too much time in Atlanta on the expert um, audience, but we really are gonna focus in on those people, getting people the essential skills that they need to be competitive in a digital, technology, digital uh, economy as well as uh, moving up the chain towards foundational and then more to the job ready, like the data analytics and the, and the um, advanced, um, some of the advanced uh, career tracks that we're delivering through some of our partners. Did I see a hand go up um, or is there a question? I'm, I'm happy to take these in the, in the flow of the presentation if that's helpful. Ed, I'm just wondering, this is Ted, <clears throat> um, in this essential area, mm -hmm. um, can you just talk a little bit about what some of those skills, you know, what, what are some of the, the, the skills that have been articulated by employers that are really critical um, in that area? Um, well, let me jump back to, um, th these are, so if you look at like the student, um, we feel like you know, the physical labor, let's take as an example. Um, they don't have much, much to any uh, digital knowledge um, or use of that in their current employment. So if you move up the chain towards the field specialist, and again, some of these people might not even realize that they have technical skills. So like interacting with a piece of technology. And again, I think a lot of everybody interacts with a phone to some capacity and, and most people have smartphones. So I, as you can then move up, you've got, Again, some of these additional uh, additional skills, I think it comes down to, Ted, um, some of the most basic skills that I think most of this audience would take for granted is how do you use, how do you use um, some of these productivity tools like Office and other, other suites? Um, how, do you, how do you use Excel, for example? You know, things like that, that I think are really foundational. Um, that again, um, when I first started this work, I, I, I really took it for granted. And, and um, you know, I, I didn't realize that there was a lot of people out there that don't know how to use uh, Microsoft Office, for example, because I've been using it my entire life. But it's, uh, again, I think it's one of, that's one of those areas that I, I think some people who are, are working on these, um, work of, working on these types of programs, maybe need to take a step back and realize that there, there are folks that, that um, might not be aware aware of some of these technologies and how they're integrated into their into their lives already and some of the things that we might take for granted that we don't necessarily know that other people don't know. Great. Um, okay, 
so covered that. So um, this is kind of an interesting slide. Um, if you look at, uh, we have the retain component over on the right, although we often think um, uh, left to right, I, I like to talk about this slide from more from right to left, because we're really talking about what are these corporate partners like Accenture, Coca-Cola, Home Depot, what are the skills that they're actually trying to fill right now? And let's, let's feed that information to the front of the funnel um, and get people interested in those type of careers. They may not have even known that those, those careers are particularly like entry level if you go through some of these, these reskilling efforts. So we have the, the ecosystem partners who fit into these. Now, with some intelligence, um, you know, we've brought in LinkedIn um, and our economic graph data to really hone in on exactly what, what are those what are the most in-demand roles in the Atlanta metro market? In conjunction with uh, what the feedback we're getting from our employer partners and really uh, having our partners make sure that they deliver to those specific uh, gaps in the labor market. And so that's what these particular set of partners through all the way through are really working on is saying, hey, let's get the intelligence that we have from the data from LinkedIn Learning. And let's also combine that with what our partners are telling us, our employer partners are telling us so that we make sure that the talent that I think, um, I think someone used the word building to a spec, or I like to say talent manufacturing, that those people that, we're, we're, that are going through this value chain are indeed gonna be employable at the end of the day by these hiring partners. So um, how the program works, uh, we have a, an Accelerate. If you look up Accelerate Atlanta, you'll be driven to our, our landing page where you could, there's a list of all the different programming that's available um, as well as the partner offerings that are available. Um, some people will, will take more of a self-teaching self, uh, self self, or a self-taught approach. Um, and then they, they will be driven to uh, our Global Skills Initiative landing page um, as which also links off to a number of free offerings from LinkedIn Learning around some of the most 10 in-demand job roles across the country. Um, and then also they can tailor that to, you know, specifically to what, the, what is needed in the Atlanta metro market. Um, for, for a subset of, the, of those people, there are some opportunities, and unfortunately we aren't able to offer this to everybody, but there is a, a subset of people that will flow into our learning partner um, channel. And those are predominantly uh, instructor led, although we do have a uh, one particular offering from Springboard, which is instructor led, but it's on demand. So it's a video based learning program around data analytics that Microsoft has developed in partnership with Springboard to get people into entry level roles in data. So data analytics. Um, I'm, I'm really proud to say that the Springboard program has been in, in, uh, in market for uh, over 10 years or over a year. And we already have, um, and it's a, it's a three to six month program. And we already have over a hundred people that have gotten new jobs with an average pay increase of roughly $11,000. So it's a, a, a fantastic program. Again, entry level type role for people who are interested in careers in data, but don't necessarily know where to get started. Um, the other part of this program that's interesting is that it actually ladders up to some of the other data science offerings if someone wanted to go deeper into that particular career. Ed, I see a question so, um, I, yeah. the, uh, about tuition. Do you and the partners cover the tuition costs for participants? For a, a, a subset of the, part of the people coming through this funnel, yes, it will be a, a fully subsidized. Okay, great. Uh, also, do you partner at all with um, with post secondary local post secondary institutions in Atlanta? Yes, there are some. Uh, there are some of those partners uh, that maybe didn't come out clearly uh, from this from these set of slides that um, have been added to this ecosystem. And and also, I think that brings up a really good point, Ted. Is that this is not a static model. Um, we're going to be continuing to add employer partners to this. We're going to continue to add additional learning partners as well as other, you know, local institutions and, and things like that that are local to that to that particular community. That's a great that's a great point. I guess one more question I want to ask on that. We, a lot of our a lot of folks in here are um, either employers or and or um, 
post-secondary institutions in mm -hmm. specific communities. Are, are there opportunities, you know, to partner with Microsoft and if, if they're able to kind of get the parts? I know Bristol Community College, I talked to um, um, President, uh, who, who I think is on here. Um, I'll see if she's on here now. No, but I do see uh, there is a President Douglas. I do see, a, a you know, Rob Denson from Des Moines Area Community College. Um, there's a lot of activity in southeastern New England. There's a lot of activity. Is that if, if areas are in uh, Beth Broom from Davis, um, are there opportunities to partner with Microsoft for the uh, post-secondary at West Virginia University? Um, so the um, this is a little bit of a, a, a you know, corporate jargon, but so I sit in the in the Microsoft Corp, and it, this is being led by the U.S. subsidiary, and I've been a big part of this V team. So all of the plans specific to what we're, the scale out plans, like what other regions and areas that we're going to go to are being um, being driven by the US subsidiary. But I would be happy to make any connections to that group um, as this starts to grow. We haven't, other than Atlanta and Houston, we haven't publicly disclosed any other areas, but I, I think there's probably room for um, some other, other partners in some of these other areas. Again, that an area that's not under my purview but I'm, I'm happy to make the, the connections that could be needed to, to make that happen. Great. Okay. That's awesome. Well, we can certainly um, maybe think about uh, how we would coordinate with our, our members, especially our post-secondary members whose engagement with, with STEM Connector is really uh, tied to, you know, helping their, their local community around um, supporting a STEM workforce. Even, sure. even, even, world, you know, tier one research universities that we work with are, um, all very committed to that goal, uh, in addition to their role as a global researcher. So that's great. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to figure out a way to make that most effective for everybody. But um, I'm happy to great. talk to explore it a little bit further, Ted. Great. There's another question here. What's the percentage of women in this persona journey? Uh, great question. Um, I don't have the this the statistics specifically, but I know there is a, a very, um, there are going to be some metrics around that, but unfortunately I don't have that at my fingertips. Um, I've just got a couple more minutes, um, a couple more slides too. Um, so from a partner perspective, the corporate partners, um, are making financial contributions to this. I think this is a, a really key component. Um, I think it's it's um, it's nice to have MOUs, um, but uh, when there's actual real dollars uh, being put down to make things like that, make things like this model actually come to life, I think that's when it becomes most effective. Um, I also think from a corporate perspective, um, there has to be a commitment to hire some of these people. Again, that's a tough one. Um, I've been pushing um, Microsoft actually to focus on, on, on some of this work. And, and we have a program within Microsoft called the LEAP program, where we focus on uh, recruiting talent from non-traditional education um, providers like boot camps or some of the learning partners that you said today. But um, I think it's also interesting uh, that for, in order for this model to work, there has to be some commitment to hire. And it, it, it not necessarily has to be um, you know, defined clearly by a set number of, of uh, roles, although that is possible and I'll, and I'll allude to that in a second, but I just think there has to be some commitment to hire um, in order for this to be successful. Um, for our learning partners, you know, it's uh, everybody has a sort of a different way of defining some of the personas. So there was a lot of alignment work that had to happen for this program to actually to be able to come to fruition and for these partners to be able to come in and, and deliver their programming in an effective manner. Um, obviously, a lot of a lot of work has gone into building around the community and there's that Atlanta has been um, super, a super partner in this um, and, and making sure that they're bringing all of the various organizations, the Better Business Bureau, etc, together to make this real. Um, and then also the shared value component, like making sure um, that the value to these partners is very clearly articulated at the onset. I think that's another thing that has been gone that has gone into uh, um, our partner recruitment. So we very very clearly design value proposition to the to the various partners who are who are contributing to this program. And um, this is just kind of to give people an idea of like how does it how does it work? Um, so 
we have, we've set up, you know, we have binding agreements with a lot of these corporate partners. Microsoft has put uh, a financial contribution into this. Um, we have MOU structures that I've brought in, um, you know, some of the, some of the other players in the, in the local and region, local regional players. We have uh, commitments from uh, our, our instructor led um, programming, such as general assembly, um, those reskilling programs. And we've also made sure that we bring all of the different disparate um, learning programs that I mentioned through the Global Skilling Initiative, LinkedIn Learning, GitHub, Microsoft Learn, et cetera, making sure that there's a central hub for that so people can find that and utilization can be tracked effectively. Um, obviously, there's a, a lot of marketing that's going into this and I, the, those sorts of engines are just starting to kick up now. Um, and uh, also on the hiring component, again, I can't stress that enough that there, there needs to be some commitment to hire for, for a number of these, for particularly our corporate partners. Um, and, and I mean, we've got our large corporate partners, but I also think um, when you think about the talent gap, um, one of the things that Microsoft can bring to this is um, we have our entire ecosystem, which includes our customers like Accenture, Coca-Cola, Home Depot, but also our partners, like some of our, our systems integrators, et cetera. Like they also can be considered hiring partners. Although we've only listed kind of, you know, the top three here and Microsoft will be included in this. I think there's a ton of opportunity for us to bring in other small SMB type partners who are also looking for this type of talent. Um, and I, I think, you know, one of the main goals for us is, is um, we, we, again, we want everyone to achieve more. And I, and I think uh, through Accelerate Atlanta, this is a clear landing space for all of the different learning programs that Microsoft already has, as well as some net new ones and bring it under into a, bring it under a clear umbrella um, and a clear go to market, which is Accelerate Atlanta. So it, Atlanta is, is our first, um, we've announced Houston and uh, I anticipate others will be following shortly. Great. And I believe that's my last slide. Great, well, are there questions for Ed? Uh, I, I did have one question um, that somebody asked me privately. I know this is um, Microsoft President Brad Smith's, you know, mm -hmm. he's been pushing this. Um, so you had buy-in at, at the top of your organization. Where are you finding the entry points are for your partners? Are you, you, you getting buy-in from the very top or, um, you know, what, what, what kind question. of buy-in do you need? Um, we're getting buy-in right from the top. You know, these are, you know, the, some of the senior leaders in the company um, are, are okay. also doing a lot of this work. Um, I didn't have a chance, and I know we're at time, I didn't have the chance to talk about what we did in Louisville with uh, Humana. Um, I'd love to maybe come back at another time. That's a real uh, corporate reskilling uh, effort that we did um, around solving some of their talent needs around data science that we brought in yeah. a partner um, that I think is another great story, um, particularly for those people who are looking for new opportunities within, within, within a company. And the economics for that, um, are, are glaring. Like it just makes so much sense to do. Um, it's almost like when you actually dig into it, it's so right in front of you that it, it's it's uh, it, it, it's kind of surprising that there hasn't been a faster adoption of some of the stuff that's happening. So, awesome. Well, uh, I think one thing that we've learned today from uh, this discussion is there is a lot of work to do in this space. Uh, and I've been Very chatting nice with with members. I, I, I'm you know manage a lot of the members that are on this call and Amy, I'm sure is having the same reaction. You'll, you'll all get to hear from Amy in just a moment uh, when we go to our breakout sessions. But uh, just so everybody's aware next year, uh, our plan for STEM Connector is to really, you know, have, have some working groups that are helping to drive the agenda for these meetings uh, and also helping us uh, drive our research and, uh, and sort of insights into, into this space. So um, thank you very much, Ed. Uh, that was a really, you were, those, you weren't kidding. Those are really dense slides. So, um, those are great. I hope not too I, dense, but you're going to get copies of the slides. So yes, uh, we do have all those slides. Um, I know like, um, I know one of our members who is not on here, but is, is famous for their PowerPoints is PepsiCo. Uh, <laughs> they have a whole team around it. And, uh, that was definitely, um, the Microsoft, you guys really put a lot of, inf a lot of information. So, Great, great infographics. Uh, and uh, let's take a 10 minute break and then we'll come back to our breakout sessions. Feel free to hang on, um, say hi to people. Uh, you know, we're, we're uh, just, I realized that three hours is a long time to, to not check email or, um, you know, tend to other things around the house. So we'll be right back in, in eight, eight to eight, nine minutes. <laughs> 